who I think a moment a lot of you have been waiting for, which is the presentation of the Mario M. Cuomo Leadership Award to the Honorary Honorable Hillary Clinton. I am about to introduce somebody far more esteemed than I am to present this award on behalf of Brady and the wonderful Cuomo family. But first, I want to put in my quick two cents. Madam Secretary, as you know, I've been working on this issue for almost 20 years, and I have had the pleasure of working alongside you for most of that time. I've had the privilege of having real and substantive conversations with you about this issue, including one tonight, and have always been not just struck, but inspired by your deep and genuine commitment and your true leadership. We've been talking a lot tonight about how we believe that this issue finally is at its tipping point. I am certain of it, and I'm just as certain that your extraordinary leadership is a big part of the reason why. And now, as for that far more esteemed presenter, our governor, my governor is a New Yorker, Andrew Cuomo. Definitely. <laughs> I will join you. Uh, honestly, it is a little overwhelming, the greatness that we have in this room tonight. Like Secretary Clinton, I've known Andrew Cuomo for more than 15 years, and I have never seen a more compelling, articulate, compassionate, and effective advocate than our governor, Andrew Cuomo. When we first met, he was the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Not the first cabinet department that you think of when you think of gun reform. Yet through HUD, he led historic negotiations with the gun industry. And since then, every step of the way, he has made it abundantly clear that his top priority is the safety of New Yorkers and all Americans. He led the passage in 2013 of a sweeping gun reform package, the New York SAFE Act, and we must applaud that. That law has given New York the strongest gun laws in the entire nation. It was the first state gun reform that was passed after the terrible tragedy at Sandy Hook, and we're talking about how Secretary Clinton has helped to spark that tipping point. Undoubtedly, the New York SAFE Act and, Se and Governor Cuomo's leadership has helped to inspire the movement that we are now seeing across this nation as states one by one pass meaningful gun reform. That is because of Andrew Cuomo's leadership. And now that New York has such strong gun laws, he's turning his attention to help lead Brady's campaign against what we call bad apple gun dealers, the small handful of gun dealers in our country that sell virtually every crime gun. They're flooding the streets of our cities and towns with guns, mostly from out of state, resulting in most of the crime and violence here in New York, including the murder of police officers. And they must be stopped. And with Governor Cuomo on our side, I know we are going to stop them. My, the, my job here tonight is supposed to be to introduce Governor Cuomo, but most of all, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank him. Governor Cuomo, on behalf of the Brady Board, our staff, and our millions of supporters across the country, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, first, the Dan Gross. Is this a great night or what? Do you feel the energy in this room and the positivism? Dan Gross and the Brady Center, they are doing a magnificent, magnificent job. They are a force for change, and they are making yardage every day. Let's give Dan Gross a round of applause for all his good work and sticking to it. We have many fine guests here tonight, and if I start to go down the list, I'll get into trouble, but I have a number of family members here tonight, and if you leave out your family members, you get into real trouble, especially in the holiday season. You don't get invited to those important holidays. We call it mishpucha in Italian. I don't, I'm sure there are other words. But we have my sister, Maria Cuomo Cole, who is on the board of the Brady Center. And we have her mishpucha husband, Kenneth Cole, who is with her. My partner, Sandra Lee, is here. My mother, Matilda Cuomo, is here. You should be very impressed. They didn't even come out for my birthday, I want you to know. I've never seen this many family members at a single event. Uh, and you have two great, great speakers who you're just going to hear from. They are really going to go down in the history books. We have uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, who is going to win the Jim and Sarah Brady Award. Uh, and if there is a man whose dedication uh, merits that esteemed uh, uh, award, Jim and Sarah Brady, the man is Senator Chuck Schumer. He has been, he has not only uh, been a fantastic advocate on guns, always, always standing up to the gun lobby, but as a senator of New York, I'm the governor of New York, I can tell you he is a tenacious advocate for New York. I mean tenacious like 11.30 at night, tenacious, 6.30 in the morning, calling tenacious. 6.30 in the morning, not even saying good morning. Senator just starts talking. We have to get upstate and right away, and I need 6.2 billion, and then we have to. He is, if you are a state, you want Senator Schumer to be your representative. Let's give him a round of applause. And to Senator Hillary Clinton, who uh, I would like to say a few words about before I bring her in. As you heard from Dan, we passed the SAFE Act, which was a groundbreaking piece of legislation uh, in the state of New York. And it's a piece of legislation that I believe has already saved lives and, and served as a model for other states as to what could be done. My father was very pleased when we passed the SAFE Act. We had talked about it before. We talked about the issue for many, many years and what we could do. And when we finally got it passed, he was happy. He knew that it was difficult politically. And in many ways, my father loved the difficult ones because that was the true test of an elected official. That really showed the person's skill or not. And it was also a window into their soul because the tough political issues are where you see what a person is really made of. He also loved that the SAFE Act was another progressive first for the state of New York. And my father was very much uh, uh, enamored with the concept of New York as the progressive capital, and that we were the first. We were the first with the women's rights movement, environmental rights movement, workers' rights movement, civil rights movement, NAACP started here. Uh, and my father was very enamored with New York as the beacon for the nation, leading the way forward to a progressive future. And for 12 years, he did just that. We passed the SAFE Act just days after Sandy Hook. Why? Because Sandy Hook was in our backyard, and it galvanized people's attention and it galvanized people's feelings and emotion. And carpe diem is also a political strategy. And this state wanted change and they wanted reform and we passed the SAFE Act literally 
days after Sandy Hook. Now, the NRA and its supporters were outraged. And one of the things they were outraged about was that we passed it so fast. Uh, they really wanted time to organize their opposition. And we moved so quickly that they didn't have that time. So they were upset that we passed it so fast. And it's funny because I actually think this state and this nation have been so slow in passing gun control and that so many people have died unnecessarily. Since 1982, 72 mass shootings, 72. And the rate of violence is only increasing with half of those shootings in the last decade, believe it or not. Aurora, Colorado, the Sikh Temple in Wisconsin, Virginia Tech, Gabby Gifford, and the list goes on and on and on. Since Sandy Hook, 90,000 people have been killed at gun, by gun violence. Since Sandy Hook. The gun issue is tragic for many reasons, but for me what makes it most tragic is because the deaths are so avoidable. This is not a dreaded disease that we don't have a cure. This is not an accident. This is not an act of God. This is a man-made crisis that costs 33,000 lives per year. And it's something that we can solve. The SAFE Act closed the front door on New York, but the back door is still open. And guns now come up from Virginia and South Carolina and Mississippi, and anyone who's willing to spend a day and a half in a car can buy a gun and bring it in. The answer is going to be federal legislation, and that is the only way we're actually going to make a difference. And remember, this nation was on the cusp of revolutionizing guns and gun safety. In the year 2000, there were numerous lawsuits against the gun manufacturers. And the gun manufacturers agreed to a code of conduct that was shepherded by then President Bill Clinton, which would have made guns safer and limited the use to the authorized operator, the authorized owner. Smith & Wesson, largest handgun manufacturer in the United States, signed that agreement that they could do it. Fingerprint technology where the trigger would only work by the fingerprint of the authorized user. Smith & Wesson signed the agreement. The other manufacturers were ready to sign it. We were in the middle of a presidential election. Then presidential candidate George Bush stood up, stood up and said, if he was elected president, he would immunize the gun manufacturers from civil lawsuits. No industry in the United States has immunity from civil lawsuits. And that's what Bush did for the gun industry. Some very brave senators stood up and voted against that bill. And we're going to have two of them tonight, Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer. So why don't we affect change? I wish I could give you a very complicated answer, that it's very hard. What's worse is it's very simple. The obstacle to change is that we don't have the political will to make the change, period. It's that depressingly simple. We don't have the political will because our government is intimidated by the political backlash. When Hillary Clinton's opponents say that they don't support gun control because they have rural communities in their state, what they really are saying is that they are afraid of the political opposition. I would have more respect for them if they said they disagreed with the bill on the merits. When they say they're afraid of the opposition, it's both revealing and deeply, deeply troubling that that is the rationale, the fear of the political backlash. My father was right on so many things. 
but he was right that the test of an elected official is determined by the question of their character. Do they have the courage of conviction? Do they stand for change? Will they fight for what they believe? Will they wilt under pressure? The gun issue is the best proxy of our time to judge the essence of an elected official. And Hillary Clinton has shown again and again, and I've worked with her for over 20 years, all her life, whether it be the radical right or the forces against the woman's right to choose or big oil and gas or the NRA or the gun companies, Hillary Clinton will stand strong by her word, her convictions, and her principles. That's why that does deserve applause. That's why my father would be so pleased tonight, and I am so proud to give Hillary Clinton the Mario Cuomo Leadership Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Hillary Clinton. Thank you so much. You know, it is great being here with so many friends and advocates and amazing public officials like the governor and the senator who are here. Um, I'm really honored to receive this award, and it means so much to me that uh, Governor Cuomo would be giving it to me. Um, his work in this area has just been phenomenal. Uh, it shouldn't be a surprise. His wonderful mother, Matilda, is here with us uh, tonight. And of course, his father uh, was not just a great man, but a good one, uh, whose uh, powerful conscience uh, served as a reminder to us all that uh, sometimes you have to do the right thing in politics and in life. Uh, even if it's not easy or, by the political pundits, uh, necessarily smart. So I am thrilled that I have this chance to be here with all of you uh, on behalf of this incredible organization. Um, you know, one of the things that Andrew was saying uh, tonight, which I just want to echo, is how hard he worked to make sure that New York responded to uh, the scourge of gun violence and in particular the tragedy uh, of Sandy Hook when Congress uh, failed to take action despite a lot of uh, effort um, in the Congress, in the White House, and Andrew led the fight here to expand background checks. Uh, Congress may have let us down, but Andrew Cuomo did not. And so to the entire Cuomo clan, uh, to Dan Gross and everyone here at the Brady Center, thank you. I really want to join you in saluting my friend and former colleague Chuck Schumer He's done so much uh, over the course of his career to keep America's families safe and to end gun violence. Um, I'm going to uh, just you know, remind us all that uh, he does have a hard time getting press coverage uh, for his work, <laughs> but he has a famous cousin named Amy who is also committed to ending gun violence, and they make quite a team. Uh, having served with uh, Chuck in the Senate, he's got a long list of accomplishments. Uh, he's done so much for New York and America, but of all his achievements in the Senate, authoring the Brady Law is surely one of his greatest. 
That law made history, and Chuck Schumer made it possible. I think we're all here tonight in this magnificent space because we agree that gun violence is a national emergency. It's an epidemic. You heard from Dan earlier this evening. Uh, there's no way to think about it other than as a profound failure of our laws and our politics. It's claimed too many lives and ripped apart too many families and communities, and it is long past time uh, to say enough. Enough talk, enough delay, it's time to act. Now, I wish this were as obvious to people outside this room as it is to all of you, and in particular to the Congress. But we know that's not the case. Leaders in the House and Senate won't even allow a vote on whether we should prevent people on the no-fly list from buying guns, including possible terrorists. In, it's just beyond one's imagination. These are people too dangerous to be let on airplanes, but Congress won't stop them from getting guns. It's just something that makes no sense. The Brady Center, however, gets it. The Brady Center has been on the forefront of this struggle. You're willing to face the facts. You're willing to name them. You're willing to keep going at this day in and day out. When we've got more than 33,000 people across America dying every year, nearly 3,000 of whom are children, there is just no reason whatsoever why we can't come together to take action. Now, I know conventional wisdom says the gun lobby is unbeatable, but that is just not true. The Brady Center proved that. Chuck Schumer proved that. My husband proved that. We have got to have the confidence, the optimism, and determination to keep moving forward on this. I will never forget that wonderful day when my husband signed the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act into law. Jim and Sarah Brady were there right by his side. It was one of the proudest moments of his presidency. And well, it should have been because now we know that millions of guns uh, that would have otherwise gotten into prohibited hands were stopped. But we can't rest on the past laurels. We have to finish the job and make comprehensive background checks the law of the land. I believe in closing those loopholes so guns sold at gun shows and on the internet are covered by the same rules that apply to gun stores and in holding gun dealers and makers accountable, if they break the law, they should face the legal consequences. <laughs> These are all, I believe, utterly sensible policies. Um, yet, despite the fact many millions of Americans agree we can't seem to break the hold that the gun lobby has on our Congress. And some people say, well, if we want to make progress, we need to build consensus. But guess what? We already have consensus when it comes to gun violence in America. 92% of Americans support universal background checks. It's hard to get 92% of Americans to agree, agree on anything. And so do 83% of gun owners. Despite what the gun lobby wants us to believe, the vast majority of gun owners and even gun sellers are in favor of reasonable measures to reduce gun violence. They believe in responsibility like the rest of us. So the problem is not finding common ground. The problem is politicians finding courage the courage to take on the gun lobby, respect the will of the people, and do what it takes to save American lives. And there is no...
There is no more eloquent voice than the voice of a parent who's lost a child or a family member, a friend. Not so long ago, I met with a group of mothers who are members of that club no one wants to be part of. They each held a picture of their child and told their stories one by one. A son killed in a car with his friends when another man told them to turn the music down and when they didn't immediately comply, shot at them. A daughter killed at a park with her friends, minding her own business, trying to stay out of the rain just eight days after performing with the marching band of her high school at President Obama's second inauguration. So many senseless, heartbreaking stories. And every day we see more of them as 89 more Americans die. So I know I'm preaching to the choir, but please don't give in to frustration, disappointment, or just giving up. The politics are hard and the politics are complicated, but we can do this. We can do it from the grassroots, state by state, and we can, I'm convinced, do it from the top down. That's what my plea to all of us is, to deliver finally what it will take to keep more Americans safe. So I'm very grateful for this award, but really it's all of you every single day who are doing the hard work of making sure this issue stays on the forefront of America's political agenda and on Americans' consciences. Thank you very, very much.